Personal Finance Committee meeting. It's September. Oh, you got to go, Connie. We'll call to order the September 6th Personnel and Finance Committee meeting, and we'll start with introductions. Tiffany Stingline, Ward 3. Jennifer Bergman, City Administrator. Connie Hillman, City Finance Director. Now, all the real large. Kevin Stunick. Jesse Dean, City Engineer. Chris Schubert, HR Director. Mike Besto, Police Chief. Teresa Burke, Grainer Dispatch. Gabe Johnson, Alderman Ward 4. We have nine items on the agenda, the first of which is approval of the MOA with IBEW admin support for the acting transit coordinator position. Chris. Correct. On August 15th, the City Council authorized staff to negotiate an MOA, it's a memorandum of agreement with the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, to appoint Transit Operations Specialist Crystal Grethier, I always have a problem saying her last name, <laughs> as the Acting Transit Coordinator effective 20, uh, August 23rd. This action was requested due to the Transit Coordinator Andy Stone's retirement. Both the union and Ms. Grethier have approved the uh, MOA and staff is asking for council approval. Um, just to let you know, she would be placed at step one of the Transit Coordinator wage grid and this temporary appointment and MOA will expire no later than November 1st. I make a motion to approve the MOA. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Next item is to ratify the promotion of TJ Lockers to the Street Maintenance 1 position. So on August 1st, the City Council approved the promotion of Street Maintenance 1, Chad Lardy, to Street Maintenance 3, our sewer lead. An internal job posting was conducted um, to fill that Maintenance 1 position that Chad had been in. And we received one application from Taylor Lockhorst. Taylor was our, our park maintenance person. Um, staff is uh, asking that he be promoted to that street maintenance one position effective October 3rd, that he be placed on step one, and that staff also request, requesting authority to begin the hiring process to backfill Taylor's park maintenance position. I think we can kill two birds with one motion. Yeah. All right. Then. I move that we approve the promotion of Taylor Lockhorst to street maintenance one position effective October 3rd, 2022, that he be placed on step one of the street maintenance one wage grid, and further that we direct staff to begin the hiring process to backfill the park maintenance position. No, I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Next item is the disposal of a retired police squad. Chief. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, requesting authorization for the sale of a following uh, retired unmarked police investigator squad. It's a 2014 Chevrolet Impala. Um, it's a squad number 498. And to further have the uh, Central Minnesota dealer with auction located south of Brainerd to facilitate the sale. I so move. Second. Motion and a second question is this being replaced no, with a no, lease no, vehicle or yes, a per, it'll be yes. next year this this year? It's right now. This year you're getting a lease vehicle. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, we vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Next up is four, ratify hiring a police officer, Nicholas Carzia, and request to hire CSO. Sure. Um, community service officer Nick Carzia. Um, uh, has successfully completed the police officer pre-employment screening process and Nick's first day was August 22nd. Um, Nicholas Carzio will start at step one of the 2022 with a rate of 29 pursuant to the LELS um, Local 65 Agreement. Um, so just some notes here, Nicholas Carzio puts our current staff level at 25 police officers for the budget of 26. Um, in addition to that, uh, with Nick being hired as a police officer, leave the department with only three available community service officers, two of which are currently filled, so we're a little short there. Um, so the recommended action would ratify the hiring of police officer Nick Karznia, starting at LELS Step 1 of 2979 with the effective date of August 22nd, and to authorize hiring one community service officer. I so move. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Okay. So just to clarify, this job offer was actually given when we still had the Civil Service Commission. Um, it was under that process. So he has been given this job offer. He just had to finish school and skills before he could start. But glad to have him on board. Excellent. Yeah, I saw the dispatch article. Got a lot of traction on Facebook. And it's, it's really cool to have a local kid step up to be on this local police force. It's, it's exciting. Any discussion? 
Hearing none, we vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Thank you, Chief. Next up is consider the approval of a classification and compensation study request for proposals. So, a staff has prepared a request for proposals for a classification and compensation study. Um, when we talked to council last year about wage and adjustments and things like that, they felt that a market review should be conducted every five years. In addition to just the regular market review, we've had a couple changes as well with the charter. So not only was our street and parks departments combined into the public works departments, but our city charter was changed. So the public utility employees now report to the city administrator. So that will affect some things as well. Um, so we are asking for a motion to approve the classification and compensation study proposals as presented. One side note, Sourcewell does offer grant opportunities for these types of things for up to $10,000. So depending on how that goes, and um, after the request for proposals are sent out, I will contact them and ask them if this is something they would consider funding for us. Do we want that Sourcewell thing to be part of the motion or not just to do that? That's just, That's just FYI, no. DDA is okay. going to come in with a lowball offer of $10,000. It isn't DDA anymore. It's oh, DD Consultant. Oh, they'll give us 10 grand to use a good DD consultant. consultant. All right. So oh, that's isn't just DDA anymore. Okay, I'll make that motion to approve the classification of compensation study request for proposal. Second. We have a motion and a second to issue the RFP as presented. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Oh, same sign that motion carries next up is the 2023 audit fees county all right so um staff received communication from clinton larson allen our current auditors that we've had for decades of a possible 10 to 15 percent increase in the fee plus an additional fee for implementation of gasb 87. Um, like i said we've had clifton larson allen as our auditors for many decades and cla audits both the brainerd hra and bpu the last time we went out for a request for proposal for audit services was in October uh, 2015 for the 2015 audit services. I listed the fees over the last years. Um, this is the total fee. It doesn't include the amount that the airport pays, but they usually, um, their portion is between five and $8,000 based on revenues. So we're looking for council discussion on the potential increase in audit fees and to direct staff if council wishes to go out for an RFP for audit services for 2022. Well, I'll start. I, I mean, I, I'm not surprised to see the fees go up, um, but I do think 2015 was quite a while ago and we should probably do an RFP. I would agree with that probably. I, I, Staff's happy with Clifton and Larson. Yeah, that's where yeah. I'm kind of against the RFP idea because we did the RFP in 2015 we did interviews with multiple firms. CLA was not the low bidder. Mm -hmm. They were the worst interview of the three firms we interviewed. <laughs> but staff really enjoys working with them and thinks mm -hmm. it's efficient working with them since they do BPU and HRA. So at the end of the day, staff is going to want to go with CLA. Why should we go through the process? Makes sense to me. Well, staff, <laughs> you know, I, I feel that it's my job to give you the information. Yes, it's great to work with them that they do HRA and BPU. I know that BPU is not interested in going out for RFPs. Um, HRA probably would if we went out for RFPs, or I'm assuming that they may. Um, you know, it is totally up to council. I mean, yes, the CLA knows us. They know what's going on in the community. They are very responsive during the year when we ask questions. But sometimes you get too comfortable too. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, but there are so many benefits, and I don't know if they were the worst interview, they're, they're, they didn't knock some apart, right? But they're local, mm -hmm. right? We interviewed Deloitte out of the Fargo office and somebody else out of Minneapolis. This is right across town. They can buzz over here and help out. There were a lot of good things back in 2015, mm -hmm. and I think if we're still going to see those efficiencies and those benefits, let's just stick with them. I mean, I agree on all of that. But we won't know what's out there unless we ask for, for proposals. I'm not opposed to it. I just think it's a waste of time and a dog and pony show. I think it's our job as a council to oversee stuff mm -hmm. and be that, that mm -hmm. decision maker. Part of that is listening to staff, which we're listening to. Mm -hmm. And I'm hearing they're happy with them. Mm -hmm. So I would say we just stay in and do not do the RFP. So who's turning to make a motion? Do we need a motion? 
Well, constant discussion of potential increase in life. Yeah, you're talking money. I think you need to drop me. Uh, you know, I... Or we just make a motion to continue to go with the uh, same firm. Yeah, CLA, but the 54 amount, amount in the 2023 budget. Uh, yeah, yeah, make that motion. Okay. Huh? Will you make that motion? Yeah. I make a motion that we approve the... Continue to, use, to, to continue to use CLA. Continue to use CLA for the audit fees and direct staff to reach out to them and let them know or whatever. To include the increase. And, and if you don't want to second, I'll second it. Up to you. Uh, I'll second that. Okay. We have a motion and a second. And what we can bring the discussion upstairs too to the other four people and yeah. see, what's, see what they think. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I get the feeling there's not a strong sentiment really. No, and my brother and dad are CPAs, and they're firing clients left and right, and they're raising their rates by 20, 30 yeah. percent. There's just there's just a shortage in the industry. Mm -hmm. right? And that's exactly what the email that was attached to the packet said. Yeah. I mean, they're having a hard time staffing, and I think burnout too. It's you know, yeah, it's another it's thing. It's real. Too, so, <laughs> any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Next up is authorization to apply for LMCIT loan program for extraordinary expense. Exactly. So we can apply up to $250,000. <laughs> That's $54,000. <laughs> From the legal Minnesota City, or through the legal Minnesota Cities Insurance Trust. Um, staff received word late on Thursday that we do qualify for up to $250,000. If it's paid back within one year, there's no interest, or there's a 3% interest rate over five years. You can pay off early with no penalty, just have to know that no and to recalculate the interest. Um, there's really not an application for it. Um, I received an email and just we need to respond to the email of when we would like the funds and how, up to how much we would have or we would need. I really think that this is a good deal considering that I think it's going to be a cash flow issue. Um, you know, and we pay it back over five years or sooner if we can. Once an investment would mature, you know, we could pay it off then too. So I, I just think it's, it's a small potatoes, but I think it's a good plan for us to use right now because I am very worried about cash flow. So would you like a motion to apply for it if there's no application or would you like a motion to send the email? I would, like a, I would like to find out that we want to take advantage of the legal okay. Minnesota cities up to X number of dollars. Um, then I will make the motion that we take advantage of the League of Minnesota Citizens Cities Insurance Trust uh, loan program for as much as we can get, <laughs> which is probably going to be the 250. Yes. Um, yeah. Second. <laughs> Motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Resolution declaring intent to reimburse certain expenditures from bonds. So we're just going to continue to talk about the lawsuit. Um, the city could issue settlement bonds. Um, we're allowed to do so 18 months from the payment date. However, we would need a resolution saying that we're going to reimburse ourselves from bond proceeds if we issue the debt after the payment is made. Again, this is just covering our basis. I'm not saying that we're going to issue bonds to pay for the lawsuit. It's just covering our basis in case we do decide to issue bonds. Okay, then. I guess I'd have to make that motion. To adopt the resolution declaring the official intent to reimburse certain original expenditures from the <coughs> sorry from the proceeds of tax exempt bonds and establishing compliance with reimbursement bond regulations under the Internal Revenue Code. <laughs> okay, then. that's what I said. <laughs> Team efforts. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, there was something was going on with WebEx. I needed to check. <laughs> right, we have we have a motion in a second. Uh, just as a discussion, I'll vote in favor. It's, it's a technical step in the process, but. I do not think we should be issuing debt. We have the flexibility. We have the ARPA funds. We have the capital funds. We shouldn't be issuing debt for this. But I'll vote on this motion just in case something crazy comes up and we need to issue debt in a couple of years. Like, if something crazy, like an unfair labor practice comes up, I don't know. Don't say Any other discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, we'll vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Post same sign. That motion carries. Adopt resolution terminating assessment agreement. Is that what we're on? Mm -hmm. Okay. And my apologies, this, this should be me as the presenter. The Brainerd Housing and Rate Development Authority created a TIF district 
um, and issued bonds to acquire and demolish several properties um, on South 6th Street, Street between Maple and Norwood. The property was then sold to a developer who constructed what is now known as the SEH building. Part of the sale required the property owner to enter into an assessment agreement with the HRA, which increased the value by 3% uh, per year through the end of that district, which was 2031. I did attach that um, agreement for your information. Um, that was done so that the HRA would receive enough increment to pay off the bond debt, as well as to pay off an interfund loan that the agency had um, so if there was increment shortfall on a yearly basis. So if that was paid off, they could pay themselves back uh, through an interfund loan. The property was recently sold in July of 2022, and the purchaser has asked that uh, they pay off the outstanding bond debt that the HRA owns in the amount of 266000 In exchange, they've asked that the minimum assessment agreement be terminated, allowing for the real estate taxes to normal go back to normal or back to the market level. However, in order to do that, the HRA needs consent from the city, the county, and the school district that they acknowledge the termination of the assessment agreement, which will result in uh, estimated market value for the property be less than the minimum market value established for the property in the assessment agreement. Uh, attached is a resolution um, just asking to approve the termination of the assessment agreement between the Housing and Redevelopment Authority and for the City of Brainerd and for the City of Brainerd, Minnesota, Nelson Keepers, LLP. No, I'm wondering how this will affect the city's estimated market value as a whole. Like, I wonder if that was a separate thing when it was computing our tax capacity for the city. I yeah, that. I suppose it will. $2.5 million value. It's, it's 2.5, they said. Yeah. They said it would be assessed at 980 is their yeah. expectation. But I wonder if that's part of, if they were using, based on this agreement, or if it was based on the... Oh, the, the TIF amount, yeah. The yeah, mm -hmm. I was wondering, I just, just it came to yeah. me that I was like, oh. Interesting. But... I'm right, looking for a recommendation to adopt the resolution. Yeah, I make a motion to adopt the resolution to terminate the assessment agreement as explained at length by Jennifer. <laughs> There's a motion and a second. It is my uh, my uh, brother and dad who bought the building, so I'll be abstaining from any any voting on this tonight. So, all in favor say aye. 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 And one abstention. And then just FYI, Eric uh, sends his apologies for not being able to attend. He would have presented this, but he is in Ireland. He had a trip scheduled to Ireland in like April of 2020. Yeah. <laughs> He's finally getting to it now. So good for him. No kidding. I'll keep my feet right here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, nothing else to come before the committee. We'll adjourn. Thank so you. Nice.